Hi, good morning. It's Jim from Mavstar Observatory. I wanted to take us back to where the pole had been stationary for the last 480,000 years and will omit the fact that it has gone through a couple of excursions. So to do that, we've got to go uh, and have a look at where it was, which was situated somewhere over Canada. So we'll just zoom in on that so we can get an idea of you know where it was originally for that period of time and you know when we talk about uh, 780,000 years <clears throat> ago you know we take it for granted how long ago that was over half a million years you know let's put that into perspective homo sapiens human beings in our form that we're in today have only been uh, recognized as being around for the last 42,000 years I know there are some that argue we've been here a lot longer you know uh, but you know that's that's another argument for another day apparently the Nangathols died out around about 42,000 years ago and Homo sapiens um, started to you know expand uh, to the point where we are today nearly 8 billion or so of us so we can see uh, where the poles were uh, over Canada over the Beaufort Sea uh, around 1840 and we can see how and when it started to if we followed the little pins uh, we can see how it started to migrate and we're going to follow it from this point to the present day where it is so We've, we just uh, follow those pins. These pins, by the way, came from Noah. Um, there was a big list I had to uh, you know, follow with the GPS coordinates, uh, which I added onto Google Earth. And that's how we got these locations and dates for the pins. But we can see uh, you know, how much it migrated. And what I wanted to just do is just measure for you um, you know from the 1840s to around about 1990s so we get an idea of you know how many miles it traveled in that time so there's 1990 and we can see it's mo migrated around uh, 629 miles so if we go from 1990 uh, to the present day and we find out that we have traveled you know 1224 miles or thereabouts gives you an idea <clears throat> let me just zoom out gives you a bit of an idea of you know how it's accelerated from the 1990s and how much dif extra distance it's covered in that space of time and you know there's our theoretical point uh, the 40 degree mark we know we're about two years away from that and you know if we do uh, see that theory playing out as I predict you know we should begin to go from the strong field lines which holds the magnetic north pole in a slow migration and once it passes that point uh, it should leave those strong field lines and go into the weak field lines this is something you can do yourself if you've got a compass. Just get a magnet by it and slowly turn the magnet in the vicinity of the needle. And when you see it migrate the needle 40 degrees or thereabouts, watch what happens. It goes from a slow, as you turn the magnet slowly, it goes from a slow migration, so the needle moves very slowly, but it gets to a point where you'll see it rock just before it goes. And then after that point, it flicks over. Um, to you know its opposite so it go from north to south the needle will that's what we predict will happen but we know why it's been pulled over um, you know the northern hemisphere and that is because it's uh, been drawn by the high intensity that's building up in this region here um, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that name in Russia uh, something Kari anyhow uh, but it's, I know it's just below the um, Arctic Circle and I know it's heading in that direction because if I pull up uh, another map which I'll show you in a minute you'll see that the epicenter of the highest intensity now over the northern hemisphere is in that new North Pole position so we know why the magnetic North Pole began to leave Canada 
and make its way across the northern hemisphere in the direction of this region in Russia. Uh, the other reason why it did that is because we have seen now in the last 15-20 years the high intensity which held it in Canada uh, weakened considerably. And, you know, I've got to say this, guys. <clears throat> you know, I'm quite happy that we've got 30,000 subscribers on the channel. You know, we've got really a 1,000 people every day tuning in to watch the videos that we put up on this anomaly that's taking place. And, uh, you know, it's like everything else in the world. You know, it's one of these things that is, is uh, going completely missed and completely... <clears throat> Um, unappreciated you know this is one of the rarest events on our planet and it interferes with some of the most important features of our planet that keeps us alive the magnetosphere and I can sort of like understand why there's so little interest because <clears throat> for a lot of people science first of all is boring I've seen people when I've spoke about this topic yawning in front of me <clears throat> And, you know, this focuses on just one specific area of science. I mean, you could say, OK, it's um, uh, geo geomagnetics, uh, part of the geophysics of our planet. But really, we're just concentrating on one area of science. So, you know, that really requires somebody's attention to be, you know, really switched on in order for them to get some interest out of it. And with our busy everyday lives, it's almost impossible, isn't it, to focus on something uh, which to a lot of people is boring. But the point is this. If our magnetosphere collapsed tomorrow as a result of this pole shift and never came back up again, all what you see in front of you on the screen that is green and those blue oceans probably wouldn't be here in a couple of thousand years' time. And this is what we reckon happened to Mars. So, you know, when you think about certain aspects like that, it starts to become a little bit more interesting. You start to realise, you know, what we've been going on about now for the last 10 years on this channel and why we've been trying to, you know, bring it to people's attention and say this is really important. You know, this is uh, the very thing that, you know, makes life possible on our planet. The magnetosphere is a component of the dynamo which generates uh, you know the magnetosphere and the magnetic poles and you know is the big thing here is the huge thing it's been 500,000 years overdue half a million year, um, years overdue a reversal and for me this magnetic reversal is unlike any other because on average before the last reversal took place 780,000 years ago the earth used to go for a reversal every 350,000 years or so so something's changed in the core of our earth uh, which has led to a delayed reversal now going back to Mars Mars had a magnetic pole it had magnetic uh, protective shield the magnetosphere and as far as we're aware it had an atmosphere and it had water on its planet we know that because when we look at the terraform we can see all those like little veins which show that there was erosion taking place through uh, water running through those rivers and we look at it today there is no water there is no atmosphere so to speak of and there is really um, no magnetosphere but we know that it did have a magnetosphere because um, a few years ago now quite a few years ago um, a, a spacecraft went over there that NASA had sent up and scanned uh, the magnetic anomalies over Mars and came over a, a, an impact crater that was recent that revealed magnetic anomalies uh, so we know from that that it had magnetic poles on its planet a magnetosphere uh, the other thing we know that it doesn't do no more uh, I think it's about 500 million years ago it used to have active volcanoes and it doesn't have those anymore so I predict 
um, that the core solidified and therefore the magneto um, you know ceased to work and when that happened it shut down the, the uh, magnetosphere and the poles just disappeared the magnetic poles and then you know it was subject to uh, erosion from the sun's radiation stripping away the atmosphere once the atmosphere had gone it was then able to you know strip away and erode the liquid that was on the planet as well there is nothing to say that our world will you know keep its water in its atmosphere forever there is nothing to say that because the very neighboring planet mars had all those things that our earth had may have had you know some life on there uh, but what we know now is it doesn't and we haven't found life on mars as of yet um so you know we know it, it you know that that planets can change dramatically and you know but this is another reason why you know we should be really grateful and thankful that you know we have this beautiful planet and you know when you start to think along those lines you know and you see how we treat this planet you know it's it's quite sad isn't it you know when we are allowing the oceans to be filled up with plastics and debris and rubbish and you know some of these are the size and bigger and than texas and we have around seven of these now and then we've got fukushima which is still leaking you know radiation into you know the oceans you know we are doing a terrible job uh, as stewards on this planet and you know as the the in most intelligent species on this planet we should be the ones responsible for looking after all the other species on this planet but you know when you get deforestation because people want to clear the lands say in brazil the rainforest there uh, so that they can use the land instead of for trees they use it for agriculture we see this happening a lot and i would bet that some of those fires that start in the amazon are deliberately started so that they can clear the forest for agricultural land because agricultural land is more profitable this is what we do you know nobody um you'll never get uh zuckerberg who owns facebook uh hand over his billions um to build a fleet of ships or a couple of ships that can clean up you know these ocean garbage patches and you'll never get one country you know use some of its gdp to build ships to clear up these oceans uh, because they're all out in international waters you know um, our international waters begin around the united kingdom after six miles offshore so anything after that point you know the uk is never going to take responsibility for and likewise any other country in the world so you know we, we have a beautiful planet you know our, our daily uh, lives are consumed with our own um, little bubble you know our families and things like that and you know the very thing that keeps us alive gets neglected every day and it's really sad and i just wonder um whether we will wipe ourselves out as a species before we realize we need to start tackling some of these big problems um you know we seem to be handling a lot of things uh completely uh the wrong way like you know uh this blaming climate shift on co2 because it's greenhouse gas and you know they use the global warming as you know it can also now cause global cooling and the reason why we're getting these flash floods everywhere is because of global warming you know it's nothing to do with co2 co2 as i've showed in charts before rises and uh, above the uh, amounts that it's at right now and it has done frequently throughout you know tens of thousands of years so and right back millions of years so you know how if we arrived at this point where we're blaming ourselves human beings for putting the co2 into the atmosphere and blaming then on the uh, that on the climate of of the earth you know don't they give the nature of this planet any credit anymore or is we got to be you know the ones that claim the credit for it every time it seems to be the case 
So, you know, I just wanted to do uh, a little video, um, you know, going back into the history of the magnetic poles, bringing us up to, you know, the present day, showing how many miles, you know, we migrated since 1990 compared from 1840 to 1990. So you get an idea of the acceleration that is taking place and just go over, <clears throat> you know, that point I've made in the past where I've come up with this theory that we should be entering the weak field lines at that 40 degree mark, which is a couple of years away, just over a couple of years away. And we have also covered uh, why the poles left Canada because of the intensity started to decrease, which held it there, and why it's making its way over the Northern Hemisphere because it's trying to get to that little sweet spot uh, just below uh, the Arctic Circle in Russia. Uh, because of its high intensity and its increasing intensity. So, um, you know, guys, we do our best here at the observatory with the equipment that we've managed to build to date uh, to keep you informed of this event. And, uh, you know, I, I have a passion for it, as you know. Uh, I know some of you guys have a passion for it. You realise the implications that we face. Some of you can leave your bubble you know, and, you know, give a bit of thought to what's going on uh, and the changes that are taking place uh, with regards to this rare event. Why it is not covered more on mainstream media is beyond me. Why they cover some of the stories that they do and leave this anomaly out is just beyond me. I have no understanding. And why, you know, 98 or 99 percent of this population on this earth are completely unaware that this event is even taking place or that it has happened many times before. It's absolutely uh, beyond me why these things are the case. So I'll um, leave it here. Uh, there's a link down there if you want to help support our observatory. You know, we can get more equipment out. We can study uh, with the data that we collect, the effects and the changes that are taking place. And in turn, you know, we can give you that, that information because we know the other organizations aren't doing that um, and that really is about it for the day guys you know uh, I thought I'd come at a different angle uh, with all this for you guys today so um, links down there if you want to help support us and uh, I'll say what I usually do have a great day as always bye for now